Okay, so we're going to talk with Kat a little bit about Andromo, about setting goals, and we're going to talk overall. I think it's important at times to evaluate where we are in life and be realistic about where we want to end up. Um, some people are counting the days, some people are counting the dollars, very few people are actually counting opportunity, and there's no opportunity if there are no goals, in my opinion, but I want everyone's perspective. We have a full house here, and uh, even Jamarcus, you know, we're going to put it in perspective. How I chastise people at times um, as I set new goals, I get antsy when um, there's opportunity on the line uh, and I want to make sure that everybody you know oftentimes keeps up so stay tuned because <laughs> we're going to talk credit dogs and goals So let me let me ask you guys this and guys we, we, we talked about coach Jamal how is it how do you normally set goals in your life I like that stussy shit. <laughs> 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 it's a hassle back in the day. Remember when Famous was a thing? Yep. Yeah, hey, yeah. hey, <laughs> we, we had all that junk before. So the question was, how do I set goals? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's some of the ways? Because, you know, she's a leader, you're a leader. Mm -hmm. I've watched you guys in a short amount of time mm -hmm. accomplish a lot. I don't know if there's a lot of like direct path. It's just like shit's happening. Oh yeah. <laughs> but so, what if you said like, yo, what's the goal? How do you identify goals? And you know, if you were giving leadership advice, what would that look like? I mean, with me, man, uh, a lot of my uh, mentors and friends that I actually do listen to, I move fast. So yeah. my biggest thing was to not go for home runs, but set like little, little increments and reward those goals to get to the bigger picture. So with me, I, I move real fast. If there's something I see, if there's an end goal we're thinking about, I'm thinking about how to hop right to that. So I have to slow down and just make little checkpoints, you know, for me to go along the way to be able to achieve what the overall goal is. And right now, it's really just taking one step at a time and making sure I'm consistent and disciplined and, uh, and staying the course of whatever we kind of set in place to do. So if I'm aligned with my, if I wake up and I'm aligned with those, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting off consistent checkpoints to get to the end goal to what we're doing. So I just slow down. Now guys, we, we're going to do a lot more lifestyle stuff. We'll do some clips and stuff where we mess with the dogs. We're getting a rat cage today. We're going to tie some stuff and bring all the dogs out so they can see one of the rats. The other question I'm going to ask you guys too, this is that book I was saying about. I'm trying to find this section on rickets uh, because I know that it limits okay. her range of motion mm -hmm. just in general. So I'm curious. He's got that, uh, you know, the presser and she, the rickets could have been soft for but she a little bold. And what happens is her rear's high, so everything on her is like she's super front heavy, and a dog automatically carries seventy percent of their body weight up front. Now, when you got a high rear and improper structure at the front front assembly, now you probably carry eighty ninety percent. So even when you watch her run, she hops at the back. Her two legs they gallop versus you see a good what we call a come and go. So when you turn on your AKC shows and you see those dogs, hey, put them on that thing, and then that joke like. People like me, Ruben, be like, ah, oh, God, look at that dog's movement. <laughs> it's gorgeous, because it's just, it's almost robotic, it's flawless. But when you see even um, Cha-Cha, our dogs, Cha-Cha's got the little slight high rear, Bam Bam, the dogs like Baloo that we have, they've got that super high rear, and he can't stop, he can't run, he can't move, he's overexerting energy, he wore out. <laughs> you go down the line, or the dog's waddling. Uh, we call it paddling, where they're bringing their feet up front and slapping the ground. A lot of the Frenchies do that too when they don't have good assembly. I can break down movement, and I can't find my dog on Dogs in Motion book. I'm losing my mind trying to find that this morning because <laughs> they come with a whole DVD. So like, this one might have to work. But at any who, lifestyle is one of the ways in which we're gonna, you know, definitely move forward. So I'm about to ask you guys a big credit question. Someone comes to you, they got a 550, mm -hmm. and they say, man. I need a hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. What's the first goal you set for them? <laughs> I know look, they're like, Jesus, you, I, I bet you go, here we go with this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't wanna make that seem like it's not attainable because it absolutely is. Um, so I think the first the first goal um, with somebody like that is, you know, of course setting the goal of, you know, getting our credit there. Um, business funding these days, it's nearly impossible to get it without having personal credit. Um, otherwise, you're going to spend a whole lot of money on, on business credit. But um, I think the first goal is to set the credit goal, right, as far as what that's going to look like. But I also think it's going to be super important to 
outline a timeline with that client and set some realistic expectations. Um, that way they can set their goals realistically. You know what I mean? Because if somebody comes to me and they have a 550 and they say they want to be at a 790 days and have funding within 120, um, I'm going to kill your dreams. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, the goal at the end of the day is not for us to do things as, pa as fast as possible um, with anything in life, not just with credit, with these dogs, with cooking, with whatever it is that you're doing. You know what I mean? If you can take your time uh, and make sure that it's done properly the first time, uh, you're going to see a lot better results. So, so how long does it take, would you say, to get, you know, 550 to 700? And why is the credit side of it more important than the money side of it? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when you say kill the dreams, I don't know if you kill them, it sounds like you're gonna just tighten the dream up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like, yo, that's a good, that's a good place to start because you couldn't, yeah. I don't want to do this dog thing. I'm like, oh, let me see a plan. And they don't have a plan, that's a good luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, well what, what, should I, what should I do? For one, you should take care of the dog. I told everybody, pause, live with the dog, love the dog, uh, believe in that dog. And if that dog changes your life, then maybe you consider putting that dog in other people's hands by way of breeding, of course, but outside of that, it's no speedy path to this. We've been cleaning crap up and dealing with dog stuff literally for the past 48 hours, realistically, and the dogs have had a tough time. Um, and unlike us, they don't have a bathroom, so wherever they go, they go. But, <laughs> but when, you, when you're looking at someone's goals and you're saying, hey, 550, why is the credit side more important than just handing them $100,000? Mm -hmm. um, I think because when you start with credit, Again, the lenders look at it as you understand money, fiscally you're responsible, but also whenever you go to repair your credit, there's a lot that we ask of you also um, to do on your, your end as far as discipline and changing habits and things like that goes. So if you can change your habits um, and, and you know get better practices in place as far as the credit goes, most likely when you do get the $100,000 and we do get you done with funding um, and you're all set up, ready to go, your business is ready, um, you know, you're gonna carry that same discipline and those same habits into your everyday with growing your business, um, you know, and, and that translates to see a lot more success. Mm -hmm. Same way you see people get into the gym, same way you see people, you know what I mean, start on a, a diet or just starting to eat healthier, you know what I mean, like that discipline transitions from area to area in your life. You don't want to be one of those people that's like, they say a one hit wonder, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Some so, people do though. I mean, some people do, but the, the, the essence of trying to build the credit and be able to leverage yourself is to be able to know what you started from and where you're going, right? So. If you just go and you try, you're in this program just to get the 100000 150000 man, chances are you're going to mess everything up. You're not going to value the money, nor the credit, and you're going to be back at square one. If you learn how to be responsible from start to finish, now you understand that little money that you have. You understand the leverage game, the education behind credit, the 100000 You know, you can take the 100000 and potentially turn it into 2, 3, 4 X that if you really sit down with a game plan. You know what I mean? With at least the basic idea of what direction you want to go. I like, I like what I like about these, this, this credit concept personally is that for me, I give people girls first, the girl dogs first, because you can't speed that up. I'm like, you've got to at least wait to the third heat, which puts you at 18 months or upwards of two years. And in some cases, some of the dogs won't even bred to the three or four years old. So when people want to get into the dog space, if you can't take care of a good girl dog, when it's time for you to breed your girl and you get a good boy, that girl's epigenetics, beyond a reasonable doubt, has been proven scientifically down to the mitochondria of the cell. That's what's going to be passed to all the dogs. And now I've proven it three times. You've seen Baloo. I've been, I never asked Earl DeMurl what his dog could do. And look at what Ego can do. <laughs> and I've never asked what you know, Hotshot could do. And Hotshot actually has some, some movement and stuff to him. I'm betting on Zara every time. And I only bet on her because of what I did with her, to be clear. So when they say, hey, somebody says, hey, I need access to $100,000, they say, hey, look what you got. Well, I'm working with a 550. Well, 550 means we've got six or seven months of work potentially. Um, and then after the three months, we got to start building from there if we're able to get things off of your credit because of your poor choices. So I love that credit is kind of like the journey of finding ways to teach people to make better choices. So why do you think it's so hard for people then to make choices when it comes to money, building their credit, maintaining their lives, etc. Based on you guys' experience, and, and who started in, you started in credit first, right? Mm -hmm. And what got you interested in it? <laughs> the poor choices I have made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, but I think, I mean, I think the reason that people make those choices, sometimes, yes, lack of education. A lot of times, um, you know what I mean? We do silly stuff when we get back into a corner. Um, you know what I mean? It's like when you're playing a sport for the first time and it's the first time somebody's really playing hard defense. You're trying to get the ball to the rim. You can't get to the rim. You know what I mean? And so you take that silly shot and you air ball. You know what I mean? It's, it's the same concept. The first time somebody gets back into a corner financially, typically instead of resetting, going and asking for help, seeking advice, um, you know what I mean? They're going to do the first thing that comes to mind, which is shoot, I gotta pay my bills and this other stuff matters. You know what I mean? I gotta make sure there's a roof over my head. I gotta make sure I got a car to drive in every day. Um, and a lot of the other stuff falls by the wayside. So I think the biggest thing that people can do is whenever they feel like they're backed into a corner, um, you know, instead of being prideful, you know what I mean? Like we all tend to be, um, go and seek help, go and seek advice, figure out how you can, you know, consolidate your debt, figure out how you can, you know, put a realistic game plan in place a solid budget um, to make sure that your stuff is taken care of instead of, you know, letting everything just go. And that's how the majority of us get into this place is, hey, we, we hit a we hit a bumpy point. COVID hit a lot of us hard, yes. smacked us, you know what I mean? Um, and so, yeah, in those types of situations, that's when we need to um, set the pride aside and seek resources and seek help um, as opposed to just letting something that's so crucial, even though it doesn't necessarily seem like it, your credit is so crucial just because of the economy that we live in, um, you know, can't let it fall to the wayside. And that's, you know, we're happy to help. That's, that's one thing that I always say, not every client has to pay us. Not every client is eligible for credit repair. That's not what we're here to do. Um, you know, obviously if, if that's what we need, we're here to help. Um, but we're also here to help as well if you just need some guidance if you need us to point you in the direction of some resources to start building your credit things along those lines um synergy is a thing you know what i mean so that's that's always going to come back to us and we just believe that making sure everybody's got the proper resources um to do what they need to do that's what the priority is so the three resources i'm guessing you would need and we're going to get to jamal here in a second too is definitely education which i think is number one and that's the only reason why I came back to breeding people. You're here, you're following, you're listening, you're learning because I saw how bad and how bad things still are. And if we don't slow down in life a lot of times, it not only will continue to run from us, but you'll never catch life. It's like the enemy of my enemy is time. And how you spend that time is what basically gets you where you want to be. And low over a course of years, if we start at the same place and I understand that I've got 10 years of work and you believe you've got three years of work, We'll see how we, we end up when this is all said and done. So what I love again about knowing that you need to be educated, you need to make better choices. Nine out of 10 African Americans have no clue about credit. That's the truth. And uh, I wouldn't even know who to call back in the day. I just had to listen like two or three hours worth of stuff everywhere I went, driving all over Dallas to try and make it make a little sense. Foundationally, pay them boys. But even more importantly, don't go make choices thinking you're getting more for less. And it's, I think that's the key. So I can put this on my credit. It's like you're getting more, but now you've got more problems. And you thought you are getting it for less. But long term, when you start talking about 21% interest after a year or some stuff, you go, whoa, now you pay five times what a TV was worth. You go, all because you thought you could get on credit. What are some things that you would give if you were helping people? Uh, even in the dog space, I think you have a lot of experience there. Like, how would you translate credit to dogs with all the stuff you've done? Because originally, mm -hmm. you thought you were dealing with credible people mm -hmm. who wanted what was best for the dog. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, <laughs> you know, myself included, learned the hard way back in the day. For one, you can't deal with everybody. And nine out of ten people are looking at this dog as an exchange of power. Yeah. It, it ain't even about the money. It's like, I'm going to have power over you. But if you get him advice on that, and try, you know, maybe tie the two together, what would that look like? Uh, man, the dog space and the credit space uh, is predatory. Uh, if you don't know what to look for, you're not educated, you're not uh, informative, knowledgeable on, uh, how could I say this without ruffling too much fe feathers? You gotta ruffle them, right? Man, it's a lot, it's a lot of, it's a lot of BS out there. When I say predatory, a lot of companies don't have the best interest. You just, you're just data in their system. You're just another person going through the cycle. Um, and in the dog space, there's so much people that 
are trying to hype you up and sell you things based off of butt line and, and not functionality of the dog. And uh, you just get caught in that, that, that spiral of misinformation. So the best thing I could tell somebody in either or space, man, is uh, slow down, do your homework, assess the situation, make sure the people that you're dealing with, whether it be the dog or the credit world or company that you deal with, they, you know, they fit some of, uh, they fit some of your qualities and what you look for and what you'd be wanted to receive dealing with someone. So the credit, the credit space is, it's a lot of, it's a lot of people, a lot of insight, a lot of information, a lot of people giving you good results. Um, but there's not a lot of people giving you education and you don't want to fast fix and you don't want to fast fix when it comes to a dog. You want to spend all that money and then down the line, there's something wrong with uh, medical issues. You don't want to do a quick fix on your credit and down the line, you realize it was just a shell fix and not a real fix and all the major stuff that needs, that's really impacting you is off there because you know someone just put a shiny thing in front of your face and helped boost your score. So you just got to really sit down and once you understand credit history and uh, the mechanics and mechanisms that make a solid file, just like you understand the good qualities in the dog, and, uh, DNA and genetics, then you're going to start putting yourself in the right path, you know, to be able to come up uh, and put yourself in a better situation. That's how I personally feel that you can correlate the two. Well, guys, food for thought there. Look, we're going to continue to tie these two dots together in some form or fashion. I like learning. I'm learning a lot. I've done, as I said, many videos trying to teach you guys about the importance of budgeting and even more importantly, taking care of the dogs. I spent a lot of money on dogs. I'm always going to spend a lot of money on dogs. I'm only working this hard so I can spend some more money on dogs. <laughs> I don't have um, a crazy life. And even when we have it all figured out, I'm still just going to find ways to have more fun with my dogs and potentially other animals and pets. I think credit is important. I think um, doing good business is super important. I was reading even this morning uh, in the AKC book about the Irish Wolfhound because we've been talking about that dog and many other dogs to be clear. And even when they talk about finding the right breeder, it gives you in the paragraph a few questions to ask so that you get a good dog from a good person um, that hopefully has good intent for the dog. And unfortunately, that's not always the case in this dog space because everybody thinks they've got the hottest thing on earth. And I'll tell you before, I'm gonna tell you another time, we don't have the best dogs. We're on the right path to making better dogs. And no matter what you're doing, the pursuit of perfection, is, is, it's, a beauty, you know, it's a fun thing, but it's just never gonna happen. So we always will be improving our dogs. Like we'll always be improving our credit, improving our life, improving our choices. And hopefully, you know, you ain't 40 and it finally makes sense after you've wrecked your life. So <laughs> if you guys had to close out with just Maybe some light information, be it dog, be it credit, be it whatever. What would you, what was something you could like empower them with to be mindful of as they continue to ask questions? And guys, some of the stuff you're going to see is going to start making you question how you're making choices. Good choices matter. They, they do. And one bad choice leads to another bad choice, leads to another bad choice. And then the good choice seems like it's a mile away because you got to make a hundred more good choices to get rid of all the bad choices. And that's life like somebody who did my dad did seven years in a level five prison after almost what 10 years total he realized i ain't going back but they, any any convict could tell you once they sit down they'd be like i can always go back and sit down for a little bit like i ain't trying to sit down so <laughs> you guys had to give me any advice what would you tell me trust your gut <laughs> if the breeder doesn't feel right if you pull up and all the dogs are in cages in the backyard, sweating, panting, dirty, covered in bugs, it's probably not the right situation. Um, if you're talking to somebody about fixing your credit, how to fix your credit, um, you know, how to just learn and get better, uh, and they're not, they're not super educational, you get a funky feeling about them, they're not willing to tell you what they're doing to fix your credit, things along those lines. Trust your gut um, and you know, trust that you can do the research and you can do the homework to find the right situation for yourself. Because um, whatever realm we're talking about, either way, um, neither one is a, is a small commitment. Um, whether we're talking about credit, whether we're talking about buying a dog, um, either way, you know, they're both large commitments as far as spending money, 
fixing your credit so that you can attain more money, have a better lifestyle. Um, so yeah, either way, trust your gut, do your research, um, and I'm gonna continue to say, always feel free to reach out and ask for help.